جزيلا دكتور عادل احب طبعا اشكر الاستاذ الدكتور ايناس شلتوت على الدعوه الكريمه لجمعيه القلب المصريه انها تشارك في مؤتمر برستيجيوس آه الحقيقه this is a very important session about the relation between diabetes which is your specialty and cardiovascular disease and as you have seen from the previous lecture that there is an important and risk between the uh, diabetes and the uh, future cardiovascular uh, uh, problems that can face uh, the patients uh, with diabetes. <clears throat> the question is, do we need to risk stratify diabetic patients or not? I personally was involved in a debate maybe two or three weeks ago uh, about whether this is important or not. And the debate was that Sometimes we don't need to do risk stratification for diabetic patients. Why? Because they are already at high risk. So do we need actually to do risk stratification for all patients with diabetes or not? This is the question. And I will try to give you some of the latest information uh, in this uh, regard. <clears throat> First of all, we have to remind ourselves that this is not a rare disease. Diabetes is actually one of the very common diseases uh, worldwide and especially in Egypt and as you can see from this uh, slide that uh, we were uh, as a, the Egyptian Society of Cardiology we were uh, participating in this study from the European Society of Cardiology and compared to other European countries Egypt was number one was ranking as number one in the prevalence of diabetes among its population so it shows you how serious is the condition and in this study the prevalence was almost 17 percent which is a very high incidence among uh, uh, Egyptian population and most seriously it is as number one uh, compared to other European countries so this is a dear uh, a, a, a very important problem that we have to deal with it the second item that I would like to discuss with you is the seriousness of diabetes diabetes is not only uh, a, a bystanding friend it is a serious problem and all of you remember this slide from Finland that showed that the patient with diabetes will develop myocardial infarction as common as patients without diabetes but with a history of myocardial infarction as if having a diabetes is as if having a history of myocardial infarction so this was very serious uh, uh, a message from this study in Finland that patients with diabetes is at the same risk as patients with a history of myocardial infarction. In a more recent study, you can see from this uh, meta-analysis of almost 102 studies, it involved almost half a million population, half a million patients in this meta-analysis, and it showed that when we compare diabetics to non-diabetics, diabetic patients were at double the risk of cardiovascular events as non-diabetics. So this is again to show you we are talking about coronary artery disease, coronary death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, even stroke is uh, uh, the, the risk of stroke and myocardial infarction is double the risk in uh, diabetes as in compared to non-diabetic population. Even in heart failure, as you can see here, that the risk of heart failure increases with the age of the patient. Whenever the patient is getting older, the risk of heart failure increases. We are talking about prevalence and incidence of heart failure. But look at the comparison between diabetics and non-diabetics. Always, at any age, the diabetic patient is at a higher risk of heart failure compared to non-diabetic patients. So we are talking about the risk of myocardial infarction. We are talking about the risk of stroke. We are talking about the risk of heart failure patients with diabetes are definitely at higher risk than uh, non-diabetic patients. I believe that this is the most important slide of this presentation, which is the way I'm approaching uh, diabetic patients. Diabetic patients need no risk stratification because they are already at higher risk, either high or very high risk. Look at this red category of diabetic population, which I believe is the majority. Diabetic patients with established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease 
whether with angina, myocardial infarction, or a history of cerebrovascular disease, are considered at very high risk and should be treated aggressively accordingly. Or if there is no established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, the same category of diabetic patients with very high risk are those with severe target organ damage. And by this we mean an impaired glomerular filtration rate less than 45 or less than 60 if there is albuminuria or severe proteinuria more than 300 alone if associated with diabetes is considered a very high risk patient or the presence of microvascular disease in at least three different sites. So I believe that many diabetic patients will fall in this category of being very high risk patients and need no further risk stratification. Uh, other categories with high risk, not very high, but high risk patients are diabetics without atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or without target organ damage and not fulfilling the moderate risk criteria. Uh, so the moderate risk criteria is the minority, I believe is the minority with the diabetes history less than 10 years and no evidence of atherosclerosis or target organ damage. So I believe that most patients with diabetes will fall into these two categories, either high risk or very high risk population. <clears throat> so if you still need to do risk stratification for your patient, if you still believe that there are patients with diabetes who are at low risk, what risk scoring calculators are you using? Actually, we don't have a specific risk calculator for diabetes, and this is another problem. This is the American pooled cohort equations. This is the equation on your phone, your smartphone, or in, on the net. You can use it to risk stratify your patients, but mind you that this risk calculator is used only for patients without diabetes mellitus because patients involved in this risk calculator were not diabetics because diabetics were already at high risk. So even the American College of Cardiology is not recommending this pooled cohort equations, the PCA, in patients with diabetes. Also in Europe, the European Society of Cardiology is not recommending the score risk calculator for diabetic patients. Look at this. The score is used in patients less than 70 years old without established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or diabetes or CKD. Why? Because these patients should be excluded as being very high risk patients. So we don't use this uh, uh, common risk calculators in this population. <clears throat> Do we have specific risk calculators for diabetes? Yes, we have almost 45 risk calculators exclusively for patients with diabetics. But again, like the ADVANCE or the UQPDS calculator, but remember that we recommend cautious use of these calculators since both are based on older cohort data. So these data are very old, so they cannot be used now in patients using statins and patients using modern ways of uh, um, treatment. So. I believe that these specific risk calculators should be used cautiously among diabetic patients. So we have a problem if you want to use a risk calculator uh, in diabetic patients. So my next question, if risk calculators are not efficient in uh, doing risk calculation for diabetic patients, can we use biomarkers to, in, to enhance the risk of our patients? The only two uh, biomarkers or two investigations that we are allowed to use as class one recommendation is the assessment of microalbuminuria in the diabetic patients and of course doing a resting ECG. Both uh, uh, investigations are simple, are cost effective, so they are recommended as class one recommendation only. We don't have to use any other tests in these population. Do we have to use the CT, the coronary uh, artery calcification scoring, actually it's, it's a class 2B uh, 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 recommendation. So if you have a diabetic patients with no complaints, with no history of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, you are only allowed to do microalbuminuria and ECG and sometimes you might consider, you might consider as a class 2B indication doing him uh, calcium scoring of his coronary by the CT. Also, you can do 
alternatively, uh, the plaque detection by the carotid ultrasound. These are only class 2B recommendations. Remember, these are not class 2A, they are not class 1, these are class 2B recommendations. Other, all other investigations are considered class 3. We are not supposed to do it. Whether we are talking about urinary biomarkers <coughs> or vascular tests or other vascular imaging, MRI, uh, coronary angiography by CT, these are not indications except if the patient is symptomatic. But I'm talking, of course, about asymptomatic patients with diabetics. Even this uh, uh, very recent report uh, from the American uh, uh, US Preventive Services Task Force, there are insufficient adequately powered clinical trials evaluating the incremental effect of the ankle brachial index, the high sensitivity C-reactive protein level, or the coronary artery calcification score in risk assessment and in initiation of preventive therapy. There are no conclusive data to use these uh, biomarkers in diabetic patients. Even in this very recent uh, meta, uh, uh, trial in 2021, a very recent trial that showed that using four biomarkers are very good in predicting the risk of heart failure. And we know that they are common complication in uh, diabetes. And if the four biomarkers are positive or are present or are acti uh, actively present in diabetic patients, the risk of developing heart failure will be almost 50%. What are these risk, fact, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, risk parameters or uh, biomarkers? The high sensitivity C uh, uh, troponin, more than six, the uh, uh, anti-ternal pro-BNP, uh, uh, higher than 125, the high sensitivity, sensitivity C-reactive protein, and LVH by ECG. If these four parameters are present, then the patient is at high risk. But still, these are not routinely recommended for patients with diabetes. More important, if the, uh, 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 the future uh, uh, short-term risk of diabetic patients is high with the coronary artery calcification, you cannot guarantee the long-term risk. We are talking about risk of diabetic patients beyond 10 years. Do we have the proper tool to use? No. Even if the patient today is having zero calcium on his coronary artery, this does not guarantee that after five years he will not develop coronary artery disease. This is the conclusion of this paper. So we cannot use it as routine. Even if the patient is zero risk score today, there is no guarantee that after five years he will remain free from coronary artery disease. So we cannot use it routinely for all our patients. So this is the most important question of the presentation. What if you consider your patient at a high risk or very high risk? Does this impact your treatment decisions? Does this make any difference in treating your patients, in your asymptomatic patients with diabetes, yes, it will make a difference. You should consider all your patients as high risk or very high risk. Why? Because if you consider your patient moderate risk, you don't need to do any further prevention goals. But if you have a high risk population, as I've mentioned, in the, uh, that most of the patients are high risk, you have to aggressively control your blood pressure below 140 as a step one. And I will show you step two is more, even more aggressive. So step one, all diabetic patients should have a systolic blood pressure below 140. And all the diabetic patients should have their LDL below 100 milligram. These are a little bit not aggressive targets, but I will show you the next slide that this is not the end of the story. If the patient is having a very high risk, then uh, uh, your LDL goal will be much less, will be less than 70 milligram. And if the patient is having any evidence of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, then you should have used the uh, antithrombotic and antiplatelet like aspirin, and you should use the new SGLT2 inhibitors also to prevent future cardiovascular events. This is step one. Step two, you have to be more aggressive. How you should be more aggressive? Systolic blood pressure should be less than 130, no more 140, except 130 now is your target in diabetic patients. 130 over 80 is your target for systolic blood pressure. LDL in uh, uh, high risk should be less than 70. But look at this figure. If your patient is at very high risk, 
then your LDL target should be very aggressive, should be less than 55 milligrams. Please remember that diabetic patients with no risk factors other than diabetes, with no even atherosclerosis, but with target organ damage, this is very high risk patients, your LDL should be less than 55. And of course, again, using dual antiplatelet therapy and using SGLT2 inhibitor uh, is uh, recommended in such uh, a high, a very high risk diabetic population. So, to conclude, uh, uh, my dear colleagues, uh, diabetes is highly prevalent. Egypt is among the highest uh, population with diabetes when compared to other uh, European or even other Arab countries. So this is uh, 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 important to uh, risk stratify all diabetic patients and to put them in the proper category of risk stratification. Diabetes doubles the cardiovascular disease risk. Diabetes is not an innocent bystander. It is a risky condition. It doubles the cardiovascular disease uh, risk. To risk stratify diabetics, no specific risk calculators. Unfortunately, we don't have specific risk calculators for diabetes. There are limited advantage of new biomarkers. We don't recommend new biomarkers in risk stratifying diabetic patients. Only ECG and albuminuria, microalbuminuria, are recommended as class one recommendation for diabetic patients. Lifetime risk, the long-term risk beyond 10 years is not found. We cannot use data uh, to, to uh, calculate the lifetime risk of diabetic patients. And definitely the treatment decision is dependent on risk stratification on this high risk category and thus we need more aggressive targets than the usual population and thank you very much for your attention uh, thank you professor samah for the excellent talk as usual actually uh, i just want to uh, to elaborate more on what's what you're going to do to risk stratify your patient because now it's not that clear i mean uh, that will, you remain, will you entirely uh, depend on uh, clinical assessment, uh, uh, lipid profile, uh, ECG? What's, what's your recommendation? First step, we have to put in our mind that diabetic patients are either high risk or very high risk until proved otherwise. So most of the diabetic patients are put in this category. And thus, you have to treat them very aggressively with the targets that I've mentioned accordingly to this that they do not need risk stratification, they need only to consider them as high risk or even very high risk. What's the difference between high risk and very high risk is the development of atherosclerosis or target organ damage. And the two tools that will differentiate this is ECG to detect any evidence of ischemia, any evidence of LDH by ECG. Simple ECG is a must for all diabetic patients and the detection of microalbuminuria. If we detect microalbuminuria, then this patient is having target organ damage, so he will put him in a very high-risk patient. Otherwise, the patient is only a high-risk patient. A minority, a minority of patients will be at moderate risk, which are patients with less than 10 years uh, history of diabetes, no history of atherosclerosis, no evidence of target organ damage, and I believe that this is a minority of patients with diabetes but we don't have to lose other patients at very high risk and uh, 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 should be treated aggressively with statins and with antihypertensive medications and with anti-diabetics, the new anti-diabetics that prevent cardiovascular risk. Thank you, Professor Samah. Uh, excellent as usual. Uh, do you think uh, echo Doppler study has have a role uh, in uh, the pre-detection of any Cardiovascular complication of diabetes. You, you, you mean echocardiography routine, or ultrasound? Routine echo, routine echo. Uh, echocardiography, again, is not recommended routinely. Only if you suspect that the patient is having uh, ischemic heart disease, so you are looking for segmental motion abnormalities. If you are suspecting uh, valvular heart disease or heart failure, uh, ejection fraction, you have to... So echo is a useful tool, but should not be used routinely. Only if you suspect that the patient is having a hidden... Uh, form of uh, uh, cardiovascular disease in this patient. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Samah. Sure.